Hello, welcome back again to Professional English One. We are going to deal with the passive voice this time. My name is Marco Mesa, as you know, and we are going to work with the active and passive voice at the beginning, then we are going to work with some structures of the passive voice and talk about uh, the passive voice in academic writing. Okay, the active voice and the passive voice will differ in the way they point out about the action of the verb and who performs or who receives the action of the verb. Okay. Uh, in the active voice, the subject is performing or performs the action of the verb and the object or the complement receives the action of the verb. Meanwhile, in the passive voice, the subject receives the action of the verb and the performer of the action, the actor, or the doer uh, uh, are, is or are part of the complement. Okay? In the active voice, as we said, the uh, subject performs the action of the verb. For example, the student in this, in this sentence is presenting. Presenting is the verb and the talk is the object. Present is, um, is describing an action that is performed by the student. The student presented the talk, in the past tense in this case. Okay? So we are talking directly about what is going on in this sentence. Another example is the article summarizes the research. The subject is the article and the action of the verb is summarize the research. Okay. The verb is summarized and we can identify by asking with who and what. Who summarizes the article? What is the article summarizing or what did the article summarize? Summarize, sorry. And the answer is the research. So the article is the subject and the research is the object of the action of the verb. Repeat, the object of the action of the verb is the, the research, the phrase research, that research. Okay. Meanwhile, in the passive voice, we have that the object of the action of the verb acts as the subject of the sentence. In this case, let's analyze this sentence. The subject is the talk, the verb is present, but goes with the helping verb to be, in this case the past tense, was, because is a singular form, the talk was presented by the student. Again, let's analyze a bit more carefully. The talk, the subject, is receiving the action of present, okay, and who? performs the action, the student. So, we are adding information about the student using the particle by. The talk was presented by the student. By introduces the actor of the action of the verb. So, this is kind of indirect. In the second example, we have that the research was summarized by the article. In this case, the research, the subject acts as this, uh, the subject of the um, sentence and summarize is the verb and is uh, working together with the helping verb was and the article who performs the action is introduced through the particle by. The research was summarized by the article. The research, the subject, the verb phrase was summarized, and the complement is by the article. In this case, we don't have an object because the object of the action of the verb is the subject. Okay, what is the difference or differences between the passive and, uh, and the active voices? Okay, actually the difference is the one we have already stated. In the active voice, we talk directly. In the passive voice, we 
a kind of indirect give information, uh, uh, indirectly give information. Okay, both ways, in, in the first example, both forms will express that the student did the presenter or that the article did the summarizing, but the way in which we are talking is a bit different. In the first, in the active voice, in the first example, we emphasize that the student acted upon the object. In the second uh, um, form, in the passive voice, we emphasize that the article was presented by the student. Okay. Uh, in the active voice, we have a direct form of speech, so we talk clear and immediate. And imagine you are throwing a ball into a target or at a target, so the target will get all the force of the ball. All the information will come directly in, in English. Okay, and like that, imagine that the ball is hitting the target. In the passive voice is a bit different, kind of confusing for some English native speakers. Okay, the subject is acted on by the verb. Okay, so the object of the action of the verb acts as the subject of the sentence. They say that the tone is roundabout, so uh, it might be confuse, confusing for some people, and they imagine that it's like uh, the ball hitting or bouncing on a wall before going to the target. Okay, so the, bo the ball releases some force first into the wall and then into the target. So the, the force that the target receives is less than the, in the active voice. To say something, please, this is just an example and native English speakers use this type of examples to understand active and passive voices. Okay, like that. The ball hits first the wall and then the target. Okay, in some cases, for example, the APA, which is very much used, and many other um, many, many other ways of uh, referencing and me methods of referencing and um, work uh, writing, will recommend not to use the passive voice too much only when it's absolutely necessary. But we need to understand that in technical English and academic English, uh, the passive voice will give more information, uh, more clear information at what we want to express. Um, sometimes uh, the impersonality that is needed in technical writing or academic writing is given only by the passive voice. Okay. In some cases also, the active voice is very direct and the reader may get uh, tired or uh, receiving too much information in too short a time, for example. Okay, so in, um, matizing or giving a, a slight variation can be interesting. And by the other hand, the passive voice is indirect and when it is too much used, the reader will have some uh, problems trying to understand what is being said or what, is being, uh, what was written, because they need to think a bit more. Remember, the structures in English are different than the structures in Spanish. So, uh, they are used to some structure that when it is changed to the passive voice, uh, it's a bit um, not that easy to understand. Okay, so try to remember that. And as I mentioned, engineering, technical and research writing very often requires or require the use of passive sentence. 
because impersonality is one uh, needed form of writing in academic or technical writing, as we said. Uh, for example, in your thesis or dissertation or uh, research papers. Okay. Uh, academic writing is objective, so what is needed is to be to, to use what it expresses the, the 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 best clear form, the best um, explicit form of uh, giving the information, and the reader should be protected to be uh, hollered or uh, tired by reading or trying to understand. And when there is an uncertainty about which one of them use, try to use the active voice rather than the passive voice. Okay, but obviously using both will give some quality, a lot of quality actually, to your piece of writing. We have two examples. The first one is the particle collision has been researched by scientists for decades. Okay, this sentence in the passive voice will seem too <coughs> uh, confusing for native speakers, native English speakers. But if we change to the active voice this sentence, scientists have researched research particle collision for decades is more uh, direct and they will understand easily, okay, in, in, a, in an easier way than the first form. The, the second example is surveys were handed out to participants by research assistants, okay. Again, <coughs> this sentence will seem a bit confusing. Uh, an active form of this sentence is research assistants handed surveys out to the participants. Okay, research assistants are the actors and surveys receive the action of the verb. Okay, let's <coughs> remember how to change uh, affirmative to negative. The tree was planted by my grandfather. Okay, this is very easy, quite easy, because we are using the passive voice and in the passive voice the verb to be is always present. Okay, anything you would like to add about this form, this structure, please ask your teacher during the presential class, in, in, in the classroom. Okay, when we have the verb to be, the only thing we need to do is to add the negative particle not. The tree was not planted by my grandfather. So we have this tree was not planted by my grandfather and in informal speech we will say the tree wasn't planted by my grandfather. Number two, the new lot of regions is going to be delivered next week. Okay, again we have the verb to be in a verb phrase that expresses future is going to be, so we need to change the verb to be to the negative form just by adding the negative particle not. Is not. The new lot of regions is not going to be delivered next week. Remember that we add the particle to the verb to be that acts as the main auxiliary verb. In this case, is. Number three, the new library will be opened by the end of the month. Again, we have the verb to be, will be, and the verb phrase, and will needs just not to be changed to negative form. The new library will not be opened by the end of the month. In, in an informal way, the new library won't be opened by the end of the month. Now, let's do some questions. Our house is going to be designed by a famous architect. The verb phrase is, is going to be designed by a famous, uh, sorry, the verb phrase is, is going to be this designing, just that. And when we have the verb to be, to make a question, we just 
move the verb to be to the first part or before the subject. So in this case we move is before our house. And the question is, is our house going to be designed by a famous architect? Number five, we have the present progressive or present continuous. Is being, is, is being repaired, the verb phrase. So the verb, the auxiliary verb is, goes before his car. Is his car being repaired by his brother in Lonnie or the stadium? Remember, we maintain the sentence structure the same, only we need to change is the verb to be before the subject. He has been taken to hospital after his accident. Has been taken is the verb phrase, and the auxiliary in this case is has, so we move the auxiliary or we put the auxiliary before the subject. Has he been taken to hospital after his accident? Okay, all these we know. We are just practicing and trying to remember grammar and um, interrogative structures. Let's do more. The murderer was arrested last night near the station. We are going to use where as a question word. And remember, if possible, try to use the quasic form we gave you some time before. We have was arrested. Was arrested is the bare phrase, and was needs to go before the subject. Where was the murderer arrested last night? The information that where request is about location, a place, and near the station is the answer to where. So in the question, we do not put that part of the original sentence. Where was the murderer arrested last night? The, the omelette has been made by, with eggs, cheese, and pepper. Again, we have has been made as the verb phrase, has is the auxiliary, and we need to work with has. How is asking for a way, or yes, a way, or in this case, a, about ingredients with eggs. So that is the part of the sentence we don't include in the question. How, why, how has the omelette been made with, with or without with? How has the omelette been made? Okay. In example 9, Fiat was started by a group of Italian businessmen in, 1999, in 1899. When? Obviously, in 1899 is the answer. So, the verb to be goes before the subject, and the question is, when was Fiat started by a group of Italian businessmen? Repeat. When was Fiat started by a group of Italian businessmen? Okay, <clears throat> try to read this and try to complete this text with the appropriate form of the verbs. Okay. We have two possibilities, so let's see. Okay, it's let's see. In we are talking about Fiat again. It's quite an interesting story. Fiat, the example. Fiat was started by a group of Italian businessmen in 1899. In 1903, Fiat produced Okay, because fiat is a subject, and we are talking about uh, in a, about the production, the production of, of fiat in that time. Okay, let's move on. A one hundred and thirty-two cars. Some of these cars exported or were exported. Okay, 
By the company, when we use by, remember, by introduces the actor, so this is a clear indication that we need a passive voice. Okay, some of these cars were exported by the company to the United States and Britain. In 1920, Fiat started or was started making cars. No, was started is not correct because we have making. So this is an active voice form. Okay? Uh, Fiat started making cars at a new factory at Lingotto near Turin. Okay, there was a truck on the roof where the cars tested or were tested by technicians. Again, by is giving us in, in, an, in a clear indication that it's a passive boy sentence. Okay, so uh, there was a truck on the roofs where the cars were tested by technicians. In 1936, Fiat launched the Fiat 500. The car, call it the Topolino, is not correct. The car was called the Topolino, the Italian name for Mickey Mouse. Okay. The company grew, and in 1963, Fiat exported or was exported, are the possibilities, more than 300,000 vehicles. Okay, actually, the only possibility is exported. And finally, today Fiat is based in Turin and its cars sold or are sold all over the world. Obviously, are sold is the correct answer. Okay, so we have all that. We have analyzed it and we have the answers. I repeat that we need to be careful and we, when we have buy an, an actor, it's a clear indication that is the passive voice. Okay? Please read this again and try to pronounce it clearly as a way of practicing. Anything you want to abound more, please ask your teacher in your classroom. Thank you very much and we'll be seeing you next time.